I think uh, we'll get started now because we have a lot to cover. Uh, but first of all, thank you for, for attending this session, uh, which is uh, titled Easy Decoupled Site Building with GraphQL and Next.js. Obviously, easy is relative uh, thing. If you know how to do it, then it's easy. So maybe in the beginning, I'd like to have just the view on how many of you have used or know what GraphQL is. Okay, good. So fairly few. Uh, what about how comfortable are you with uh, React and JavaScript in general? Not so much, okay. Uh, good, but in any case, uh, never mind the details in this uh, talk. I mean, the technical details, if you need to go back to them, please do, do later, because it's uh, going to be a lot of things in a sh quite a short while. Good, so let's get started with a brief introduction of myself. Uh, so I've been working with, uh, I'm Jani Tarvainen, I've been working with web development things uh, for over two, two decades, uh, at least 12 of those with Drupal also. Maybe not so much recently, but in any case. Uh, I work, work mostly with the, the uh, current day job, so in my company called Easy Systems, which creates content management tools for, for enterprise customers. And I usually use TypeScript, JavaScript, Symfony, and PHP, so pretty much the familiar stack for, for uh, Drupal developers nowadays as well. So, but in addition to my day job, I do believe that you have to try things to actually learn things and to minimize the risk. I do them during my, my evening job, so at Malloc, and this talk is about an exploration of mine into some technologies that I, I chose to try. And uh, that's my Twitter handle, and that's my official personal branding image, so if you see that somewhere, that's me. Good. So uh, briefly about the agenda. So what is decoupled site building? We'll go through that briefly. Then a very quick introduction to both GraphQL and Next.js, what are they? And then to the actual meet. Uh, so a brief overview of what I've built using these technologies. Uh, just give you a hands-on idea. And then finally, uh, a few experiences or things that I could consider good, bad, or maybe even ugly about these different tools. Good. So uh, decoupled site building uh, has been uh, quite popular, at least as a hype term, for, for some years now. So it's technically that you build a website uh, based on some kind of content feed. Uh, nowadays, as, as in today's keynote was also discussed, there's also many which only offer content API, and those are uh, very popular. But in many cases, still, uh, the traditional back end is used to build websites, and maybe the decoupled way of using, using is not the norm. And I'm sure there's many reasons for that. Uh, one, obviously, is that then you might want to spend too much time fine-tuning something which is not really relevant, and so on. But in any case, there's always uh, room for improvement, and here, a brief introduction to these two technologies. So GraphQL and Next.js, they are two separate technologies, which I thought that they will work to, well together. Uh, they are both very opinionated, so they kind of decide a lot of things for you. As a developer, I like that, because I like frameworks not having to decide details, so, uh, so I just kind of like to work on, on that. And the key here is that uh, we create a decoupled site with uh, server-side rendering. So the first uh, render is done on the server side, and then the GraphQL API and the client picks up from there. So you can obviously uh, imagine that there's some complexity there, but I think we've come a long way uh, in, in just a few years. You could already do this a couple of years ago, but now with these technologies being more mainstream and more mature, nowadays actually, if, if, if you look into it soon, You'll imagine that it's um, something that you could also uh, take into use without too much overhead. Uh, so I always like to have op options. So there's obviously other options for both GraphQL and Next.js, but I chose to, to try these. So GraphQL, uh, two years ago uh, or so, it's well, as announced by Facebook. Uh, so it's uh, an API. You can make queries in JSON format or something that looks like JSON, and then you get JSON back. It's a little bit different from REST, mostly that doesn't focus on the whole verbs thing that you, 
uh, you get when you want to read and you post when you want to uh, create and patch when you want to uh, update and so on. So there's obviously discussions which is the proper way and so on, but this is, uh, I think, uh, interesting in many cases. Uh, there's many uh, options for CMSs and content APIs. Uh, for this talk, I tried uh, a number of different tools. Uh, the content APIs, uh, at least uh, Cosmic JS and Graph CMS, were too limited to my taste. So I, I didn't choose to use them. I chose to use Easy Platform, but uh, that's something that then for Drupal, you also have the GraphQL module, which is being developed. I checked that it's only uh, inactive use on 40 sites, so it's ne really not mainstream, but from what I've read, uh, it's, it's um, maturing fast. So that's kind of what GraphQL is. Uh, then about Next.js, uh, Next.js is a JavaScript framework. So it's a framework, it uh, by default decides a lot of things, how you want to uh, root things, how you want to render things, and so on. Uh, this is something which is uh, unlike maybe kind of uh, more traditional frameworks which work on the framework or on the browser or in the client. Uh, this framework uh, both works both on the client and on the server. So it's um, some challenges there, but it's, it's anyway the key. It does use React as a universal view layer. And it does run, as I said, the same code on the server and the client. And it's quite flexible. Uh, you can actually modify, modify it quite a bit, but you don't need to. So this is the, the brief uh, introduction to these two technologies. Uh, then to the kind of hands-on demo. So I built uh, a demo site uh, for, well, it's not a demo site, it's a real website uh, for the largest Finnish-speaking React conference in the world called Rauma React, so React Rauma 2017. The end result is a rather uh, straightforward looking website. I didn't want to get uh, too complicated because I wanted to learn the basics, not get all in. Uh, but the idea here is that there's an API, GraphQL API in the back end, which drives this site. Uh, it technically is a very limited site. It has the front page and then a navigation which works like this. So in any case, you can see now that here uh, the GraphQL API picks up. And if you go to another page, uh, you can see that uh, it does more queries. But if I do just look at the source, uh, it already gives me the source rendered uh, in HTML. So uh, if I use uh, an alternative browser, such as uh, links, the site actually works just as well even without JavaScript, which is good for SEO and, and the first load speed. So that's kind of the, the idea of what, what I built and how it works is the GraphQL, GraphQL. As I said, it's an API format or method, standard more, more or less. Um, if you see something like this, uh, this is called GraphQL. It's a client for the GraphQL API. Uh, the GraphQL API, one of the key things is that it, it, it tells you what the, what the API can do. So you get automatic uh, documentation, which you can view, for example, with this client, but any other client. Uh, there's uh, modifications as well. So mutations is when I want to write, but when I want to read, which is in my case, I just wanted to read, I, I use the query. And from this uh, list, you can see a number of different options. Anytime you use a GraphQL API, uh, these will obviously be dependent on your application domain. So in Drupal, you may have something like views or fields or whatever. Uh, so in any case, uh, that's not, it, do, it doesn't define this. Uh, but how it works is that um, what you can do is write queries. And because we have this kind of type information about the API, we can actually do queries such as uh, location children and the API can give me information. Uh, then this, what I'm writing here, this is actually the GraphQL uh, syntax. So I can find a location children for number 60, 68. And then I always get the result, in, in this case, what I, exactly what I asked for. So if I want, let's say I want the content for, from this API, you could see that we have a very shallow, simple content model. And then from the content, I want a name. 
So you can see that opposed to creating new REST endpoints, it's quite straightforward and so on, uh, at least in the query uh, method. Uh, you can also alias things, uh, so menu items, and then I say the menu items, then I get the menu items here, and so on. And I can also perform multiple queries. So if I just want the uh, location, one single location, which is sort of the front page, I can do a query for that. And then obviously I need to pass an ID. I will use 68 again. And I will get uh, results from here. And this is then when you use GraphQL, the query language, this is what it looks like. So you, you will make different kind of queries and so on. And when you think about how you want to create decoupled sites, so you have kind of different queries that you want to use and then render use. So just to build uh, quite a basic uh, website uh, like this. So the, the key part here is then, if you're familiar with React, uh, Next.js is very, very simple to get started with. So for each page, uh, you have a single entry point which maps directly to the URL. So for pages slash about.js, uh, so in this case, if I have something like he about here, uh, the framework will handle that it, it loads this page, then it loads my uh, React component, so uh, this kind of really low barrier to entry, uh, and then you get already the server-side rendered functionality as well as uh, the, the, the front end taking over. So uh, this is really, really um, the kind of meat of it uh, is the low, uh, low barrier to getting started with. Then obviously. Uh, if you consider like PHP uh, to something like this, so we had index.js or something like that. If we want to pass parameters, so in this case we have a single page, which is activity 71. Uh, here I wouldn't get caught up in the code, uh, but we simply need to pass uh, the activity and then we get the parameter and then we can perform a query to get the content for this specific page. So uh, in this case, uh, one, single image, one single page. Uh, where GraphQL, in this sense, uh, comes in is that if we think about the query language that I typed here, it's very straightforward. You, I don't need to send some specific headers or something. I can just do queries and the result is pretty, pretty nice or simple to, to manage. So uh, the query language is simply written in line, for example, in my index.js. What I actually do in the back end, uh, the code is, by the way, available then for you to see how it works. Uh, but in this single query, I get first the front page information and then I also get the navigation information. So I can do uh, these in a single query, which uh, may have been something like uh, unorthodox just a few years ago to do something which looks like this. Let me see. So the code for, for that uh, specific page. Obviously, we have some imports in the beginning, uh, but this is uh, the front page. So I perform the query here. Obviously, you, can, you don't now see any results, but you could technically build the query in the tool and then copy paste it here. Uh, I do pass one parameter, which is my root location ID, which is 68, which I used. And then I also get the activities, which is in this case used for the menu. And for rendering, obviously, because this is built on React, uh, if you like React, uh, it's very uh, kind of familiar to you. So you, you just have your own types, then you output the values here, and you get, you can also then create uh, reusable components. Uh, so uh, in the previous talk, we talked about tweak components, but in this case, obviously, then uh, you can have a navigation component, and then you can reuse that navigation component from page to page, which is sort of something that you can use. Uh, then uh, the, yeah, this is just the simplified uh, view of that template, and then the navigation uh, JavaScript is also here, just in line. So it's very simple. 
I get the items and then they get a title, then I loop them through and so on. So this is um, nothing really as said, it's nothing exciting in the sense that it's, it's still, uh, it's still uh, essentially the end result is a website and you do need to, to kind of uh, find the use for something like this. So it was more of an exercise, but I did find in general that I was pretty happy with the setup. It creates something like a single file. If I go there, I can see the query. The query is simple to read. Uh, the templating, my uh, personal uh, liking is now that actually uh, the, the React is a really good templating language because it forces structure, it forces you to have uh, components within components as opposed to something which is just outputting uh, JavaScript or sorry, HTML, so it's good. The, another nice thing is that you can export so you don't need to run the node server which you normally would need to run a node server to actually serve this information out, so you can export just static <coughs> HTML. I also found that the framework, the Next.js framework, it is flexible enough for me. And as opposed to sort of a front-end only decoupled option, it's obviously a better SEO because you get server-side rendered for free, essentially. And it's also then that uh, you can build really non-compromised UIs. If you have rich front-end functionality, well, you can use this together with anything else that you use, would use with React and so on. So you can, you can integrate really, really well into these kind of standard uh, JavaScript current or contemporary things. So then going forward to the bad things. Uh, so as said, I said uh, the title was easy decoupled uh, site building, but if you don't know JavaScript or JSS, JSX or React, uh, it's not necessarily very easy to begin with, uh, but this is a really good place to start, in my opinion, as opposed to two years ago, you would have first spent some time trying to figure out how to get server-side rendering to work. Now uh, you kind of get that uh, out of the box. Then you do obviously lose CMS capabilities, so if you build a site like this, then you will need to build some kind of layout management system, which is not necessarily something that uh, will return any ed additional value to, to create in this kind of a way. Also, some simple things are really complex. So if I want to do Google Analytics on a regular site, I put the, the code there on the site. I navigate from site to site. It works. Here you have that same code running in the browser and in the server, and then you have to just take things into account. This is obviously for, for every, every uh, site like this, but sort of uh, something which is just interesting. Uh, another thing is obviously the, the development because you're working with a rendering system that works both on the server side and on your browser client. There's some things which will bite you. For example, just course headers. If you load the site like really on a page load, the server won't care that you have cross-site origins headers or not. It will work. But then next time you click click from that page, then you will, will get an error. So I'm sure there's you know situations where uh, very simple things will become very hard because you decided to build it in some fancy way. So, uh, so that's one thing. Then obviously one thing which was current for React also until recently, last week. Uh, so the, uh, for React, there's no more patent drama, at least in theory. But there is still some people uh, like to FUD about graph. GraphQL patents, so Facebook has some patent of using something like this for social media applications. But whether that's really a problem for you, it depends, probably not. Then going to kind of the, the ugly things, uh, so as said, it's really nice, it was a nice exercise to do, but I'm, I'm glad I tried it before I tried it in production. Well, uh, obviously, it, well, the site is in production, but in any case, so does it really provide any value? The initial page load is actually bigger because you need to send the all, all the extra JavaScript things. So the initial page load, if you just go to one page, is actually bigger. It doesn't give you much advantage. And because the you're doing uh, caching both on the client side and then on the server side, I can imagine that you will have a world of weird things which you never 
in a, either you do on site on in browser or or then on uh, client or sorry on on server rendering or on client rendering but when you do mo both and mix them i'm i'm sure you'll get uh, into all kind of interesting situations uh, and then, yeah, because if you're running without cache, then you're actually rendering React uh, nodes all the time, and that's CPU bound, so you're not just sending out an HTML blob, you're rendering, doing a lot of work. That could pro potentially be something uh, of a performance bottleneck, uh, probably not in a low, uh, low uh, uh, volume site such as this, but in general it could be. And then obviously because I do server-side rendering, if my uh, first request to the back end is really slow uh, to the API because the server is doing it first, then I don't get anything before that. So it might be also then that the performance is not better, it's worse if you have something like uh, things. And then yes, the caching, especially if you have sessions or uh, things, I can imagine there's all kind of interesting things there. Uh, then something which I think before you get uh, all kind of intoxicated, as I did, just looking at this query and then looking at queries, I can make, I can nest things and, you know, get all kind of things in a single query. I think it's uh, healthy to remember that uh, all of this uh, data is then obviously available also to any person walking on the street. So if you just expose all the endpoints here that you can search for users, then before currently maybe if you have a Drupal site you know the URL to find users but with this it will tell you straight out that here with my users. So what I would probably do if you were to build a, a decoupled site using GraphQL or just expose any GraphQL endpoint, uh, just limit to those that you really need, not necessarily uh, everything such as here. Uh, I, I have everything including users and probably I wouldn't. So you can obviously have many GraphQL URLs were to get information from. Uh, and then, obviously, because the queries can be very complex, there's a mechanism that allows you to create queries that don't overload the server by kind of calculating a score, how complex is the query. But I'm sure you can still take shortcuts and not calculate, and then you do a DOS because you can just do any kind of a query there. Uh, and then one thing which may, not, may or may not be a, a very a valid uh, concern is just um, GraphQL and SQL injections because technically I'm writing a query here in line then I'm I'm not sanitizing this parameter but I could technically I guess escape this and then tr just start doing something else uh, fetching users or whatever obviously it will always be locked down to the specific API user but I'm sure it's still something to, to consider when you think about, uh, you know, that, well, it, it's really fast to build, uh, but then usually then there's a downside as well that uh, those can be complicated and uh, because somebody will, will be looking if you have a high profile popular site, uh, what, what, what does your API actually tell me that I can do? So somebody will just uh, be, uh, knocking on the door. So uh, first of all, we have a few minutes left. I think we managed to get quite a lot of information. As said, if you want to go to that website and find the source code, you, well, you can either find uh, the, the, the slides, or then if you go to react.nu, which is in Elvish language, which is Finnish, you can find on the view source and on GitHub you can actually execute and see how the whole application works and hopefully then learn from something what I did. And as said, uh, this is a very simplified example and on purpose, but as a kind of uh, ending note, I think I, I, I would build something simple at least uh, now and who knows then uh, in a few years whether this will be the regular thing or whether this will be a curiosity, that remains to be seen. So do we have any questions? Good. I guess that was too much information maybe. Uh,
and then we have a contribution sprint on Friday. I was told to, to remind about this. And then obviously feedback as well. Uh, so you do use the uh, feedback information, whether there was too much information, too little information, or my hair wasn't so nice, anything works. Good, so thank you. <laughs>